There we go. That should be live. Click. And click. Um, okay. You know, you'd think like Twitch always has those left hand icons and like for me it always just shows like the most famous. Yeah, hundred percent. Like like PlayStation and all that. But literally the only time I go on Twitch is to go to the E1M1 network. Right. I feel like <laughs> it should be in that column. Yeah, it should be should be at least sorted by most visited. Yeah. Oh man, I got my new computer ordered a couple Ooh, weeks ago nice. and you know, it's not supposed to ship or have the parts in or whatever till like the first week of July. Right. <laughs> I keep checking uh, the website like would you go please. With? Uh I went with uh iPower, mm. iBuyPower.com. Yep. Um almost went with CyberPower. Uh but talking with you and some other people, like those two websites seem like they're the best. Yeah, rated. they they seem like they're both pretty high quality. Yeah. But uh, CPU wise, I went with an AMD Ryzen nine, uh, nice. the fifty nine hundred X, something that's like a, that. That's a good CPU. Uh, I think for the video card, I think because um, like at at a certain point, because I'm I'm mainly building this thing for music production, right? Yeah. So I went with a higher RAM speed. And I went with like 32 gigs of RAM. So. Yeah, and like a better CPU because that's what you're going to be using. Yeah. Yeah. So like the video card is where I saved that money. And that I went with like an NVIDIA 3060, I think. Yeah, I have uh, a 3070 in mine. And it's only because the 3060 wasn't in stock. Like that was the one I was really aiming for. And like it pushes literally everything I throw at it without even sweating. So like... A 3060 is going to, like, these cards are going to last us for a long time. Okay, that's good. It was yeah. several hundred dollars more to go with. Like, I think to go with the 3070, I would have paid, like, $200 more. Yep. And if I had gone to the AMD equivalent, I think the starting uptick was, like, $500 or something yeah. ridiculous. Oh, that's so and crazy. I was already pushing my budget on this thing. I already mm -hmm. spent a little bit more than I meant to. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. Like my current yeah. computer is literally on its side right now because <laughs> the um, the CPU heatsink I have is like a third party one and it's gigantic. Yeah. And during the move, like no matter what I do, it is always slightly off the CPU. And oh, my no. computer <laughs> runs like crap. So this is the only way to ensure <laughs> that it's on there. Like, like I probably should take it off and reapply um, the freaking... Uh, Oh, uh, the paste. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The paste again, but I'm I'm hoping I can just make it another month so I don't have to yeah, do like, that. Don't touch it for a month. Don't even look at it. Like just hang in there, yeah. little buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Record these podcasts, do whatever music things I need to do. It seems right. to be working fine. Yeah. Hopefully it'll <laughs> hopefully it'll make it. <laughs> oh man. Uh um, all right. Are you ready to uh start this episode? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, all right, let's start uh, in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Picking Up the Pixels RPG Love. I'm your host, Boston Jeremy, as always, is Musum. Hey. Uh, Mina's taken another knee this month, so hopefully we'll see her back uh, here on the show soon. Uh, Musum, what have you been playing this past month? Um, so I feel like with Mass Effect and... Uh, Shimigami Tensei Nocturne re-releasing like right. this is going to be my pattern for the rest of the life is I'm going to play <laughs> the re-releases of these games exactly <laughs> and whatever Elder Scrolls game there is so right. I apologize audience <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so most of my time has gone to Mass Effect Le Legendary Edition mm -hmm. um, I am almost through the first Mass Effect I have like all the collection side quests done, except for I think I need one thing of light metal for my resources. Oh, okay. And I need, uh, I think I have two or three side quests that popped after I did the last. Like, like when you start Mass Effect, uh, you know, they initially were like, go to Novaria, go to whatever the other two are. Yeah, um, like the big tentpole uh, yeah. kind of quests. 
So I've done all three of those now. So Vermeyer, the one where, you know, you lose a crew member, uh, is, you know, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh, apologies to the audience. It's okay. Um, uh, but you don't, I, I feel like that's probably common knowledge by now, but. So I'm just mystified by somebody walking back and forth in the background and the dog dutifully following them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm coming along. Here we go. Let's go. Yeah, we're walking back this way. Heck yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, anyway, they uh, they put some work into Mass Effect 1. Um, yeah. It's, it's ultimately like the same game, but it looks like a thousand times better than it used to, mm -hmm. um, which... Maybe a thousand times is way too much of an exaggeration. <laughs> I, I don't know the the launch, especially in like the the three sixty. It, it I I feel like it looked very much of the era where it's like you definitely don't look like kind of a PS two game, but you kind of don't look like what you think what you remember three sixty games looking like. It's sort of like oh everybody looks real plasticky and it's the yeah. the lighting is real weird. Yeah, I mean, most of the faces are still the stuff of nightmares, but yeah, like, <laughs> but like the the graphic overhaul they did, um, I think is really really good. I think a lot of the planets look really good. Mm -hmm. um, the inventory changes they made, like the inventory is still a pain in the butt, but now you can. Uh, and I don't remember the original Mass Effect a hundred percent. Despite having played it numerous times, but right. <laughs> you can mark things as trash. And when you go to a vendor, you can hit sell all trash. Right, um, that's huge. They have everything kind of sorted in different categories that you can go between pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whereas before, I think it all just went into one giant bin that you were I attempting think so, yeah. to manage. Yeah, like guns and armor and everything just went in one. It went in yeah. the inventory. It's like, oh god, okay. <laughs> yeah. The uh, all the hacking mini games, like about ninety eight percent of them, appear to just be like button prompt matching. Oh, um, interesting. Where and I don't I don't know if this was in the original game or not. Like, but because the original hacking mini game I remember from the first one was you had that weird circle where you were trying to line things up. On. Yeah, you're like twisting and rotating the circles. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And there are a couple like story beat missions where you run into one of those, mm. um, but but for the most part, it's match X amount of symbols to the button prompt. Um, okay, interesting. The uh, class wise, everything's mostly the same except they in legendary mode. Um, you can select a level thirty cap where they uh kind of distribute everything to you so you can for the most part max out your character in the first run it seems like oh, okay interesting um, trying to think of what other changes uh the camera in the original game was kind of far back and i think mm. like on the pc version you could zoom out a little bit and on this one they made it more like two and three where you're closer to a shoulder camera oh, okay uh, the uh the Mako, that, that one's the hardest for me to talk about. Because when I first played Mass Effect 1, it was like a year after the game came out and I played the PC version. So, mm. like, they fixed a lot of the issues with the Mako controls on the PC. Um, that said, on Pharos, like, a large chunk of that level is driving along this highway with an endless chasm to the side. Yeah. And that you could fall off and die in the original version. In this version, you can't. Oh, um, great. that's huge. That's great. They just have like an invisible bumper there. Nice. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear someone who's never played Mass Effect 1 kind of give an account of them playing through this version. Um, okay. Uh, we're back. Sorry, everyone. Technical difficulties. Having some issues here. So I'm going to, in post-production, I'm going to put all these clips together and we'll just... Everything will, everything will fit nicely, so uh, apologies. Yeah. Anyways, we're talking about uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition kind of wrapping up uh, wrapping up the uh, first game here. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I'm still really enjoying the visit to the first one. Like, the planet searching, I think, is, is ill-conceived. Like, I think yeah. it's 
you have the Mako, which already has kind of questionable controls. And while they enabled it to kind of go up almost a vertical mountain, like it's still a pain in the butt to do that. And yeah. the level design, like at times seems like they want you to have a path to drive around the mountains and go places, but your little mini map doesn't give you a preview of any of the terrain or anything like that. It's just, you know, target dots and mission arrows and things. Right. Um, so it's, uh, I don't know. It is what it is. I don't, I don't think, uh, it's not a. It's a section of the game I enjoyed at first, and and uh, soon stopped enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> soon tired of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I really look forward to getting the Mass Effect Two. Um, that is, you know, one of the great all time games. But yeah, uh, I also picked up uh, Shin Megami Tensei Three Nocturne. Mm. Uh, the uh, have, remaster. Yes. I have not paid for Dante. Like going into it, I thought, eh, ten bucks is not that big deal. And then I looked at the DLC pack, and I'm like, yeah, ten bucks for Dante? Is that really? <laughs> it's yeah. Maybe like five bucks. Um, and honestly, like I haven't played through with uh, Rido anyway. Um, so yeah, is he the one that comes with like the sort of by standard without yes. the DLC? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was the. Like, basically, it was when it released in America, we got, like, the collector's edition, and they replaced him with Dante, you know, originally. Right. Um, so, I am barely anywhere in this game, and it does not look to me like they have changed much at all. Um, like, aside from, like, the graphical update, because, uh, you know, if you play an old PS2 game, it's like looking into a foggy mirror nowadays. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but... The game looks really good. Uh, it still plays really good. It's um, one of the things that I had forgotten about was um, just the amount of quality of life changes we've had over the last oh, ten yeah. years. Um, just the uh, gosh, um, like so. Nocturne uses what they call the press turn icon system, which is what like all the Persona combat is kind of based on. Yeah, but. Persona improved on that, like, you know, by tenfold. Um, mm -hmm. The way the per press turn icon uh, works is every character gets one icon in your party. Mm -hmm. um, if you make a critical hit, it does not use... like. Okay, let me back up. Um, whenever you make an action, it will use somewhere between half to a whole of that icon. Oh, you, that's right. If you hit someone's weakness, then it does not use any the first time. So you can't. Sure. You can't just like it. infinitely combo them. <laughs> yeah. Like the same character cannot infinitely combo. So you can make it through your entire party before you use a portion of your turn icon. Right. Um, I think is I think that's how it worked. I may be describing this poorly. It's been a minute. Like they have a lot of. Um, uh, I forget what the area is called, uh, but if you take the true demon ending, you'll have to go through that entire area. But they have a lot of um, battles based on you kind of maximizing your turn icons, which honestly, those battles are all really cool. Uh, and I think the reward for that is your main character gets an extra icon. Oh, um, okay. There are a couple things in the game that will award you with stuff like that. And like... As you fight certain boss enemies, you'll discover that they'll have more than one icon. Um, oh, that's cool. But it's uh, it's still a really good game. Uh, it uh, I'm barely anywhere though. I'm not even to the first boss who's Fordius. But like, right? Uh, they've added voice acting to everything, which is at times a little jarring to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Especially, like, I probably should be listening to the Japanese voices instead of the English, which is probably mm. the jarring part because you're right. very obviously Japanese people speaking with like really obnoxious. I don't know. Anyway, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I still really like this game. I don't think it's going to necessarily win uh, new converts, but I'm kind of looking forward to getting through the grind and yeah. kind of rediscovering that story. Like, 
Oh, right. I forgot about the old guy in the chair and the young lady in black attending to him, who's also the young boy with the old lady attending to him. Like, right, right. <clears throat> it's, yeah, that's uh, a cool game. I think the only thing that um was like a super minor bummer for me, I, I haven't picked it up yet, um, but the, the only super minor bummer that I've seen is that um, it is still 30 frames a second, and... For anyone listening, that's not a super big surprise, especially for like a PS2 era game, because they tied in that era, they tied so many of the game's systems to the frame rate. So when you increase that frame rate to 60, like the entire game just completely breaks. Um, so it's it's not too surprising, but it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's, it, it would have been nice to see it at 60, especially on a, on a bunch of the more powerful platforms, but it's one of those things where it's like, you, you can't go through and kind of, at that point, you would just do a full remake, and that's not really what they were looking at doing for this for this version. Yeah. yeah. I, I do wish they'd added, like, a couple more quality of life features, but I, yeah. I'm not at the point where, like, I wish that as, as someone who played the game before, not as someone who... Like, it hasn't annoyed me yet, but, like, the uh, your main character gets powers through Maga, by equipping Magatama. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably butchering that word. Hopefully the game right. will say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, I guess it's like, you know, they do it in Persona too. Like, as your character gets a, like, your party members get a skill, you have to replace old skills. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you got to kind of have a plan in place. And on Nocturne, since it's your main character this is happening to, um, you you basically have to have a plan for what type of character you want to build them into, you know? Yeah, you, you kind of um, can't be jack-of-all-trades, otherwise you're you're not super useful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I don't have a lot to say on that because I'm barely anywhere in it. And as I get through the Mass Effect stuff, I will start putting more time into that. Um I, uh, you know, speaking of Persona, I played a bunch of Persona Five Royale and finally got to the new semester. Okay, um, I um, I gotta admit, I picked up uh, Persona Five Royal uh, this oh, month. Wow. I've been playing a lot of it because Sony had their big, uh, they had like a big sale here recently, and every time I go and look and see, like, okay, it's Persona Five Royal on sale. Like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm in a good spot where I could be happy to play it. But I'm definitely not going to be spending sixty bucks on it, and the the kind of the vanilla version of Royal was sixty bucks, and I was just like, man, that really stinks. And I looked at the deluxe version, and it was twenty five bucks, and I was like, <laughs> all right, you got me. Twenty five bucks is is a pretty great price for that, and all this like super obnoxiously overpowered DLC. Um, yeah. So I. I have been playing a bunch of that this week. I'm in like the beginning of uh Ju- May, the second month, May. Yeah. So I'm in like okay. May 10th or 11th or something like that. Um so I finished the first dungeon. I'm I'm ramping up to I got went into Mementos the first time, uh met Jose for the first time. Uh, who's, I keep wanting to pronounce his name Jose, uh but that is not how he pronounces it. Um Man, what a different game this is! Uh, I mean, just I, it's crazy because like we've been talking about it on the show for a while about how different it is, but like even in the like the intro thing, the sort of in media res, uh, like casino heist thing, you're going through like normal, and then all of a sudden the new lady shows up, and she's like, "I'm here to defend you, senpai. You've helped me over this," and I was just like. What, who the hell? What? What are you doing here? <laughs> and then, like, in two minutes later, uh, Morgana is like, "I don't think we can get around this guy. Why don't you use your grappling hook?" And I was like, "Already? What? What's happening here? <laughs> like, this is this is crazy." So, like, from the beginning, so much of it is so different in really pretty fantastic ways. Um. And one of the first things it had me do was um, import my save from Persona 5. I was like, and they're like, you'll get bonuses. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? I, I guess I'll try that. Um, and they're like, all right, you can get that and all your DLC in the cardboard box in your bedroom. I was like, oh, right, right. 
So I go through the game and, you know, eventually it gives me control. So I get my, I open up the cardboard box. It's giving me all the outfits from the deluxe editions. Like everybody's got a swimsuit. Everybody's got a summer casual, spring casual, fall. And it's pages and pages and pages of outfits and, um, and like end game overpowered persona. And then at the end it goes, oh yeah, you, uh, thanks for playing persona five. Here's 50,000 yen. And I was just like, Oh my god. <laughs> like, I'm I'm so rich at the beginning of this game. Um so it it it, it is pretty great. Um I like that uh, so I'm following a couple things. Number one, I there are like so many overpowered persona you can pull out at the beginning for free because of that DLC. So I pulled out something like level 75. I have that equipped on Joker. I had the game set to easy, so I'm like mowing through Kamoshida's Palace, which feels really great. Um, I collected all three will seeds. Um, I I I took care of that, no problem. And um, I like all the little changes here, like when you go and do a confidant uh, sort of meeting, and then you go back to um, the the LeBlanc. They, you have that little phone conversation with them where they're like, oh, yeah, hey, man, thanks for meeting me today. You're like, oh, yeah, no problem. Like, you, you, I, I like that little kind of additional because before it was like, we just had a heart to heart. Okay, bye. <laughs> it just like, it, it was it was a little bit, a little bit of a letdown. Um, the, you can get extra social points from it, too. Yeah, like I'm, I'm following a, ga a guide on thegamer.com. And it very much is like, do this this day, do this, choose these choices, and sort of that stuff. Because I didn't really do that on the first one, um, so I'm kind of, I'm looking to maximize this playthrough. Um, and, uh, like, even seeing the 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 updated confidant information on the, the fast travel map, like, the fast travel map seems even better this time. Um, I just unlocked the Thieves' Den, which is crazy. I don't even know if we've talked about that on the show um, where it's like, here's an extra area you can go to that has movies and concept art and pictures and you can run around as everybody. And here's a mini game where you're playing card games with everyone. It's just like, oh, my <laughs> you guys put so oh, much wow. into I this. Even, I haven't even done the card game thing. <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole there. there's a whole like gambling card game thing where you can win more of the like Thieves Den currency um, in, inside of it. Like there. there there's so much in this game that is is kind of can constantly peppered throughout uh, throughout all of it. And it's not just like is uh, we've been talking about a lot of the upgrades, and it seemed like most people uh, when I was reading reviews and stuff were like, oh yeah, it's like Persona Five, but there's a third semester. It's like no man, like everything in here is is totally different and totally upgraded, like. You don't even buy the TV from the secondhand shop anymore. Like you get that in your room and you buy the DVD player from them. Like there, there's so much stuff even from the beginning that's that's so much different. It's it's really great. It pulled me back in. <laughs> I, it's a really, really, really good version of the game. Yeah, um, I will say, uh, just I, it's good that you're following a guide to an extent because yeah. I did not max everyone out. And I thought I would have all this time in the new semester. And yep. the new semester is, for the most part, on rails. Um, oh, okay. Interesting. My understanding is there's supposed to be, like, a week or two of free time in there. Uh, mm -hmm. But, like, I'm still going to... Uh, well, okay. Things you, you need to know. You may already know it. I don't know. Uh, you need to get the counselor to rank 9 yep. um, before, like... November seventeenth or, or something, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it. The guide is really interesting because they're like, we're gonna do some weird stuff now in May, because you need to do X, Y, and Z in November to get the yeah. new stuff in like December or January. So like, we're we're gonna be pushing hard on some things now to give you enough time to like push hard on other stuff later. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Well, and I didn't do the guide, and I think there was only, like... Like, I think the gun shop guy was the... The mm. gun shop guy and Yusuke, I think, were the only two I did not max out. Right. Um, which, uh, who knows? Maybe I will still pull it off. Um, mm -hmm. 
the new semester is on rails to a huge extent. Though. Okay, uh, interesting. But the story they're doing there, they could not like I understand with this story being the one they wanted them to do, they had to have these characters already integrated in the previous game for this story to work. Uh, I see. Okay. Uh, and that's all I will say about it. Cause I don't want to spoil anything at all. Uh, yeah. they do some, some cool twists to it. Um, yeah. But whereas like, like the persona for golden new semester, this is not like, mm. um, but I'm, I think they're going to do this one thing story wise, and I really hope so. I need to get back to it and finish it up because it's, yeah. you know, I can't be too far off from it. Um, and plus, I think, like, in terms of, uh, I don't know, they just do a lot of really interesting things with that mm -hmm. story at the end there. Um, That's cool. And I'm very much want to see whatever the payoff is. I just need to quit starting new games. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's um, sort of tough, too, because, like, there's there's parts where I'm sort of catching myself like uh, really early on after you finish Kamoshida's uh, palace and um, he sort of turns himself in in front of the school assembly and you guys have you I forgot that you sell his Olympic medal which I was like oh yeah that still feels really weird um, and then you go like have a fancy buffet with the with the money and sort of like Ugh, okay yeah all right still still some Persona Five stuff here. Um, I forgot that that scene is like forever long and I haven't really been fast forwarding through much stuff, but I definitely fast forwarded through that where it's like, okay, yeah, like I, I get this whole thing. Like we're, we're just going to keep on moving. Yeah. Um, so like there's, there's still that pull of like, I don't know if I need to keep playing this right now. Cause it, yeah, like it's still persona five and then a run into someone new. Like I just ran into that camp counselor and like there's new voice acted sections for all of the new scenes that are in there i was like okay yeah you, you pulled me back in all right i'm done back in here yeah it's yeah. Man. it's great it's a great game and yeah. and you know the different costumes you wear will change the battle music in mementos right yeah that's right that's right i forgot i forgot about that because i have um I only went through the Mementos tutorial where it's like you go through one floor, you get to the next floor, and they're like, "Oh, it's locked. Super weird." All right, we'll come back. Um, so I'm I'm still at that. Still at oh, that right, phase. right, yeah, right. But yeah, uh, Persona Five is great. And if and if you're listening and you haven't played Persona Five, it, it seems like you don't need to play the first one before. Royal is just kind of that game with extra stuff or like the kind of rough edges sanded off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah. think so in every way. Like none of the, the dungeons that annoyed me, annoyed me a little less this time yeah. through. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. Like zipping around with the grappling hook. Like you, the, there's that great part in the, um, Kamashita's dungeon. Uh, I guess it was sort of an infamous place where you go up on the roof and there's like three or four really tough enemies kind of circling around. And in the, the, in regular Persona 5, you'd have to kind of sneak around and really try and take him out one by one. And uh, in this one, Morgana's like, that looks really tough. Why don't you just grapple? And you, like, grapple all the way across the dungeon and all over to the other side. Just You just bypass <laughs> the entire area. And it's like, this is great. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's great. This, this game's really good. Cool. And, well, I'm glad and, you're playing it again. And thankfully, uh, it's something that largely my my kid doesn't really mind watching. I don't have the the sound on, obviously, for the the Ryuji uh, uh, expletives. Um, but the only <laughs> thing she hasn't liked so far has been the Kamashita boss fight. Because she's like, I don't like his tongue. It's like, yeah, yeah kid, me either. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> he, uh, man, yeah, they made him look gross and creepy in that. Yeah. Fight. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I'm playing on PS5. Runs really great. The load times are super quick, uh, which is most of the time like you get the people passing in front of the screen, and like it has like one wave of like three people passing by, and you're already in the next area. So it's it's really great. Yeah. Well, Two cool. thumbs up. Uh, and then the only other thing I've been playing is uh, Epic Seven. Um, oh yeah. I should have written down notes. I thought I had something to actually. Oh right, they uh, they made some major kind of improvements. Um, mm -hmm. So before in Epic Seven, you would use these penguins to kind of get additional experience to level guys up. Oh and yeah. 
you had a limited amount of hero slots in your inventory, and they took up hero slots. Well, that is right. That's so no longer the case. No, nice. Um, they also took like five of some of the best moonlight five star heroes, mm-hmm. and now you get one free. Um, oh, great! <laughs> so, like, I think it's a uh, Dark Corvus, uh, the whatever kin. I don't remember all their. <laughs> Mm-hmm. adjectives for their names um and uh i'm not gonna remember the other three it doesn't matter all, all five of them are pretty good uh arbiter vildred is like meta right now so oh, okay. i i probably should have gotten him but i'm mad at him enough in arena so <laughs> i decided i was gonna get a uh specter tenebra who is uh yeah kind of a a debuff type character. Um, but Ooh, nice. the, the other interesting thing they do with those characters, I think the curb it a little bit is like, you have to like, they have four sections of the character you have to unlock after you get them. Like, mm-hmm. um, and I think I only have specter and Tenebra, uh, 50% unlocked right now. Um, oh, okay. So I'll probably have the rest of her unlocked in another week or two or something like that, which I'm not, it takes forever to get like one of these characters kind of uh, get enough resources invested to them to use them anyway. So yeah, it's, it's like, like a I'm... real long term chase. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I thought those were kind of cool little things they did. Um, I feel like they changed something else, but that, that's probably all that's worth saying. So uh, yeah. Boston, what else have you been playing? Uh, the only thing I've been playing this month is the new season of uh, Destiny 2, Season of the Splicer. Um, people have probably seen it online that it's, uh, as Moon called it on TVGP, Destiny meets Tron. Um, it is very, very Tron-inspired. Um, essentially, your your big thing is... Uh, the the Vex the 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 robot people have plunged the uh, the tower then the the last city into an endless night, um, and to try and get to try and solve the problem, you're essentially diving super deep into the the Vex network, which looks like Tron, um, and it is super cool. Um, so far, kind of. They they continue season over season to take really big leaps, um, and there's kind of a there's a new semi social area they introduced last season called Helm. It stands for something, um, and last season it was really just like one big room and it, it had a, a decryptor for some of your umbral engrams, which is still a really hard phrase to say. Um, it wasn't really a lot of stuff. Um, but this season they open up a new wing where Fallen, the one of the, the enemy races in the game, there's like a, a small group of Fallen allies that have joined you. Um, they live there uh, along with sort of a, an older part of the city. And there's a bunch of them hanging out in the tower too. Uh, they're like checking out the some recesses. There's two of them that are constantly trying to figure out how to use a vending machine like it's it's really good um uh so they've opened up that whole thing so this area continues to uh, grow why that's important is they started doing this last season and it has made such a huge improvement in destiny storytelling is whenever there's going to be a seasonal storytelling event you go there and Everybody who's sort of involved in the story, they they come to that place too. So, old Destiny two, you'll probably remember this from some when when you were playing. It was a lot of like, I'm flying from one place to another. Someone I don't know who has like a thirty second speech bubble telling me what I'm gonna go do. I go do a mission where a ghost is yammering at me, and then they give me like 15 seconds at the end, and you go off to something else. Um, that's not the case anymore. Um, we still have a little bit of that. Ghost is largely silent now, which uh, is is kind of interesting. He's been pretty quiet the last couple of seasons. Um, and now instead of that stuff happening, everybody goes to one place in Helm, all of those people involved are all there with you 
talking to each other, interacting with each other, and talking to you at the same time. Um, so it's like, it sounds like this kind of minor thing where it's like, yeah, that's video games. But in Destiny 2, it's such a huge storytelling boon. Other than like, I went to Zavala and he told me to go do something and I did it. And I came back and he said, congratulations in like a text bubble. Um, it's such a huge improvement and it's, it's, it's really making a change uh, in Destiny 2 in kind of a, a real fundamental way. Um, and it, I, I can't stress enough how good th this season so far and last season uh, have really been in, in kind of uh, making a lot of your allies much more important and feeling like you're actually part of this story instead of like, yeah, we'll send the Guardian to go shoot a bunch of people. Good shooting. All right, moving on. Uh, so speaking of shooting, all that stuff is still really good. Like the, the core gameplay and gunplay of Destiny 2 still continues to be good. Um, it's just they're improving all this stuff around it. Um, and uh, my uh, raid team and I, we uh, uh, Vault of Glass just launched uh, two weeks ago, the, the, the famous Destiny 1 first raid um, that just came to Destiny 2. That's free for everybody. Um, so, uh, you don't have to own any of the, the Destiny 2 DLC for that, or any seasons. Um, we, uh, finally beat it this week, uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so that was our, our first completion. They have, um, pretty, not seriously, but pretty fundamentally updated that raid. So, it's way more fun than it was before um because by the by the time destiny one ended it was sort of like yeah stand in this place shoot all this stuff yay you won um but this one they've kind of upgraded all the mechanics and you know the oracles fight you can't just shoot all seven of them you have to shoot them in the order that they spawn um like the the gatekeeper encounter you kind of have to hot play hot potato with this relic between these two uh these two um areas that you're fighting in like it all these really cool things that don't make it impossible but it's like you you and your team have to do some mechanics this time uh which is really nice mm -hmm. um and it's just Destiny 2 is great i i it's this season is going to be super long because the, the next expansion got delayed uh but that just gives people more time to check out all the cool stuff um so Destiny 2 is still two thumbs up two, I, two, it sounds two like there's a up. lot of game there and i remember that yeah vault of glass thing like yep. the amount of times we would get to the end to the teleport <laughs> section yep and then just hit a freaking brick wall <laughs> yep that and and that was us last night where is the first time we we fought the final boss uh in this new version um and a lot of it is like <clears throat> all right three of us are going to go in this other area <clears throat> the other three of you need to call out the things you see up in the sky for us to shoot on the other side. So it's a lot of like two the two teams doing two things at this at the same time to kind of feed each other information. Um, it's really it's really cool. They they did a really really great job. Oh gosh, um, is Galahorn in Destiny too? No, thank God, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. That's how I remember playing that. Raid yeah. Just... Uh, sadly, you also can't push Atheon off of his little pedestal with uh, grenades anymore. Uh, oh. They they patched that out. That was uh, so for anyone listening. Uh, Musum and I cleared Vault of Glass the first time together. Um, and I think we had been in there for a couple of hours and we were like, please, I just, we just need to, can we just try pushing this? We, we got to go to bed. Like, can we try and push this guy off? And it totally worked and we won. It's like, cool, great. We're never going to be able to do this again, but we, we completed it once. All right. Um, yeah, it was good times. Um, but yeah, Destiny 2 continues to be great. Um, I think if, if you... If you don't like live service games or you don't like Destiny in general, nothing that Destiny 2 is doing right now, I would say, is is going to change your mind. It's not like, oh, they completely, now it's a, it's a grid-based RTS. Like, it's, it's, it's nothing like that. Um, but if you have been interested in it or if if you kind of lapsed and you want to come back, it, like, it's, it's never been in a better spot and it seems to keep getting better kind of week over week. Um, and now they're doing the great thing that they took from uh, Fortnite where they have weekly challenges, but they only have 10 weeks of them. Uh, so essentially, and the season is way, way longer than that. 
So kind of at the halfway point of the season, you have all of the challenges for those 10 weeks available to you that you can kind of do at your leisure. Um, and they essentially just award you with a whole bunch of loot and XP and uh, uh, stuff you can use to buy stuff in the store. So um, they're really trying to decrease the FOMO at, as time goes on where you don't have to play every day. You don't have to play. You don't have to be in Tuesday at reset just to get in there and do stuff. Like you don't have to raid every week. You, like you don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, but you can still do all the stuff and any of this season stuff, seasons 12 through 15, stay around for the whole year until season 15 is over and Witch Queen launches. So anything from season 12, as long as you have that season pass, you can hop in and still do that stuff. Like, that was two seasons ago. But if you want to keep doing that stuff, great. You can hop in and keep doing it. They're not removing it until, like, March of next year, um, which I think goes a real long way to saying, like, there was this cool thing, but it happened, you know, the, it used to be, there was this cool thing, but it happened six months ago. Yeah, whatever. You can't play it anymore. It's like, yeah, you, you got like a year and a half to do all this stuff. So you, you, you'll probably have uh, plenty of time to, to kind of get that stuff knocked out. So, um, yay, Destiny 2. Uh, <laughs> still really great. Uh, all right, let's move over to uh, releases and our news story here real quick before we uh, wrap up the show. Uh, releases for June 2021. Fancy Star Online 2 New Genesis comes out PC, Xbox One, and Series X on the 9th. Um, this is their kind of huge revamp of Fancy Star Online 2. Like, I know we just got it here in the States, uh, like <laughs> last year, um, but it's been running for 10 years, something like that, uh, over in Japan. Um, and this is them doing kind of a, a whole hog remake essentially um they're they're changing pretty much everything about it especially graphically um so this this looks really great um, i'm hoping this is another kind of good entry point for a bunch of people to uh to hop into this um i i played a little bit of pso2 and i really like it but i do not have time in my life for yet another live service mmo I've got Destiny 2 and Fortnite, so, like, that's <laughs> that's kind of my max. Um, other than that, you know, if I kept pushing more, I'd be, like, ignoring my family. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so that's coming out in there on the 9th. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade uh, comes out on the PS5 on the 10th. Um, this is the, the, the kind of current-gen upgrade they're doing. Um, also, alongside it, the, the Yuffie? Yuffie? Is yeah, Yuffie. Okay, I always, whenever I read that, I'm like, yeah, Yuffie, of course. That's not. Um, well, I, maybe I'm wrong. I always say Yuffie. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, she didn't show up in the the remake, so I guess we'll find out here in like a, a couple of days. Um, but the alongside that, the the Yuffie kind of side story DLC is going to be coming out uh, as well. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought that was the Yuffie side story. No, so this is. This is confusing. So let's break it down because there, there's this is confusing. So Final Fantasy VII Remake came out on PS4. If you own the non-PS Plus version of that, you can either pop the disc in or re-download it, and you'll have the PS5 version for free. So the 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 kind of Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS5 version. They <clears throat> kind of did another pass on the lighting engine. They, they cleaned up some of the graphics. They made it run a little bit smoother. Um, you can upgrade. You can sort of copy your save file from the PS4 to the PS5 version now. There's a there's a patch out for it. You, gotta, you have to fire up the PS4 version of remake to upgrade you to upload your save file to the cloud it sucks and then once the ps5 version comes out you download that and up, like, download it it's frustrating the remake integrate version on ps5 is the final fantasy 7 remake plus the yuffie dlc in one box um so that's it's kind of the the full experience i guess until they uh release another piece of dlc here um but uh it's, it seems like the full thing. Also, if you haven't seen it, they upgraded the Fort Condor minigame in this, and now it's like a 
it's like a 3D auto battler, like kind of auto chess thing, as opposed to like a tower defense thing. And it looks really, <laughs> it looks really great. I'm really excited. Apparently, my thing next month is going to be Persona 5 Royal and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Like, we're, <laughs> we're <laughs> just you're the old classics here. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to to kind of check out. Uh, how this new version looks and I'm really excited to check out that Yuffie DLC because it, it seems like it's largely a side story but might kind of bridge the gap between 7 Remake and then whatever Part 2 is going to be um, but we'll see we'll see when that uh, comes out this week uh, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, yes the PS2 and Xbox game, comes out on PC PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Series X on the 22nd um I wouldn't expect this to be a super huge... It's not a remake, and it seems like it's not a real, like, super big remaster. We just played um, Bard's Tale remaster on uh, Game Club here recently. It seems like it's more along those lines, where they're, like, kind of sharpened up stuff. They increase the frame rate and the, the resolution a little bit, but it's not, like, 4K, mm. HDR, 120 hertz. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing like that. It's really just, like... Hey, if you wanted to play couch co-op on this PS2 game you guys love, like, it, we're, we're putting it back out. So, uh, Legend of Mana remake comes out PC, Switch, and PS4 on the twenty fourth. Um, I I love Legend of Mana so much, or Mana, if you want to be uh, <laughs> fans like Pinky up about it, uh, super fancy about it. Um, I really love this game a lot uh, when it came out on the PS1. Uh, it's 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 one of my favorite PS1 Square games. Um, I'm really happy to see they didn't go super crazy on the graphical filter on this. It's not like Final Fantasy V on mobile, where it's just like, oh, cool, you ruined it. Good job. Um, it's really nothing like that. Um, but it, it looks really great. I, I would really recommend it. It doesn't look like they have really messed with it too much. Um, if you have not played Legend of, of Mana before, you might want to play with a guide. Um, part of the whole conceit of the game is after you clear like a dungeon or a town for the first time, you get another piece of the world to put on the map but kind of like dark cloud style you can put those anywhere and areas will interact with each other um and you can see some really cool stuff but some of the interactions might not be super obvious um so that would be my recommendation is at the very least like maybe not like a a gameplay walkthrough but just like where should i put this undersea dungeon oh i should put it next to the caves and then it changes the caves to have additional stuff and some side story stuff because i put this next to that thing mm. um Lightning Ma is really cool that's that's a that's, really cool game that sounds cool yeah it's really and it's it i remember it not being super super long i think i remember it being more along the like 20 to 25 hour length because i think they wanted you to play it multiple times to say like oh what if i put this dark dungeon next to this light town what happens if both of those are kind of next to each other um, and kind of mess around with that stuff uh, Scarlet Nexus comes out PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One Series X on the 25th um, I didn't I had sort of forgotten this game was coming out until um, uh, Nymp was talking about on TVGP recently and uh, we were watching uh, some gameplay while we were talking about it this game looks super cool uh, this is, it's essentially a very anime third person action RPG. Um, but one of the big things is you can kind of rip stuff out of the ground using your mind powers. Uh, that's telekinesis, Kyle. Um, and then kind of use that stuff to kind of throw like telephone poles and vending machines at enemies. And sometimes you can do like a quick QTE on screen to hit the enemies multiple times. Um, it looks really, really, really neat. Um, and the, the Series X and PS5 and PC versions especially look really cool. That That's a really... It's like, oh, here's an anime game in 4K. That looks really good. I, it's a really cool anime art style, now that I've Googled it, too. Like, yeah, it, it's cool. There's a demo out on, I think, PS4 and PS5 and the, the Xbox family. I don't know if there's one on PC right now. Um, but from what Nymph is saying, it, it was a good, it was a pretty meaty demo. Um, so there's, 
there's plenty of stuff for you to you to check out there um and uh last but not least here disgaea 6 defiance of destiny comes out on the switch on the 29th um i I've really resisted buying any Disgaea games on the Switch because I feel like it's kind of the perfect platform for it since you could grind the hell out of those games without even noticing it or, you know, watching TV or something where it's like, ah, no big deal. I've got 400 hours in Disgaea 1 now. All right. Haha. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, so I'm, I'm still resisting, but I don't, I don't know how, for how much longer. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about our big news story this week. Uh, Square Enix celebrated Dragon Quest's 35th anniversary. This one, as much as I like the Dragon Quest series, this one really snuck up on me. Um, they announced a whole bunch of stuff. Kind of the crown jewel of the announcement here is Dragon Quest XII, which is titled The Flames of Fate. Um, they say they're going to make some changes to the turn-based combat system. Uh, here it's Dragon Quest so I'm sort of not expecting them to make any major changes uh, it's not going to be like uh, Yakuza 7 where it came out and it's like here's a totally different genre um, uh, and uh, they also said that they're going to try and make it a little bit more adult um, I don't know how I feel about that because the part of the thing I've always liked about Dragon Quest is the story is often fairly serious but not like grim dark super super serious or anything like that um it's always been sort of like yeah bad stuff happens but kids still play these games so you know nothing that bad um so that seems cool but that also seems pretty far away um they didn't they didn't have any release window or platforms or anything like that. The only thing they said is they're aiming for a simultaneous worldwide release, um, which I think is the first time they're doing that for a Dragon Quest game, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, they announced two things for Dragon Quest X, uh, which is the MMO that we never got over here. Uh, both of these things are also not coming out over here, so we're going to move through them quickly. Their version 6 of Dragon Quest X is going to be available this year. They also announced a um, Dragon Quest X Offline, uh, which is largely the MMO, but with kind of a, a storyline through, kind of through line going through it. Um, a little bit of a different visual style. Um, they didn't have uh, any real platforms they're looking to release it next year and they're pretty clear at this point that it's not going to come out over here um which is a bummer but I, I feel like maybe if it does well enough or maybe if we continue to buy other dragon quest properties maybe it'll come out over here uh, i'm not sure um dragon quest treasures was announced um this features some of the eric and mia from some previous dragon quest games kind of it looks like more of a maybe a kid focused RPG, um, but with maybe kind of not a traditional Dragon Quest game. Um, no platforms for this one either, but this this one looks like it would be pretty perfect for for Switch and and maybe mobile or something like that. Um, and uh, lastly, here the big one, Dragon Quest Three HD Two D Remake. Uh, Essentially, they're taking the same engine they used to make um, uh, Octopath Traveler, and they're remaking Dragon Quest III. Uh, oh, which, wow. Which is incredible. Uh, Dragon Quest III is great, and that engine is super cool, and this game looks really good in that style. Um, I, I, I really hope that Square continues to do some of their remakes. Um in this style you know like final fantasy 4 5 and 6 would be great in the style because it's just it's not like here's a graphical filter or we replace the sprites it's like no we kind of it it feels like it keeps the same spirit of the games but using this this really cool kind of spin on the unreal engine they have here for the the hd 2d uh engine and then project uh triangle strategy is using the same one too um uh, it, i think that's a really <laughs> 
I'm sorry, that name always that gets name me. Is, and, and you know what's what's worse is it's, that's probably going to be the final name too, because everyone's like, yeah. yeah, it's Final Strategy, and Square's just like, ah, we did it again. Um, but uh, I, I, that's a really cool idea, and I, I'm really happy that they're uh, they're going to do that, and they, uh, they kind of like. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Mentioned that maybe they'll do the same for Dragon Quest One and Two, which would be really great because um, the remakes, the last remakes they did for those were not good. Uh, they, they like the pixel art was all like off kilter from each other. It was it was really rough. Mm. Um, and please go remake Final Fantasy Five, you cowards. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Final Fantasy Seven or Final Fantasy Five Four Job Fiesta is starting here in like. 12 days um so if anyone wants to do the pre-registration that's live now at forgefiesta.com i don't i'm not affiliated with it i just have the final fantasy five, five brain worms so i'm like as soon as it hits january i'm like yay it's almost here yay um so prepare to hear about that next uh next episode <laughs> okay so i guess my next games will be persona 5 royal uh final fantasy 5 and uh what was what's the other one <laughs> Uh, Final Legend Fantasy of Mana. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. You know. All the classics. Yeah, the, the hits of yesteryear. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, that's all the news stories we have. That's our episode. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at pickingupthepixels.com. Uh, everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Um, Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers. Behind the scenes, early access. We don't always have a lot of stuff here for Pup, um, but you get a lot of early access to the the kind of the, the rest of the, the shows here on the, the network. Uh, Misum, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at jbaudio.net. <laughs> I know my website. <laughs> uh, jbaudio.net, and that'll have links to all my music stuff and whatnot. So Nice. Uh, and you can find Mina at uh, pretty much anywhere at Mina K.O. Rocket. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. <laughs>